Midnight Moon Written by Susanna Thompson Narrated by Sarah Sampino Chapter 3 Damien apologized to me the very next morning. I was wary at first when I saw him standing in front of my locker, but he looked down at the ground as I approached. Hey, he said. Hey, I answered cautiously. He stepped back to allow me to open my locker. So, yesterday was weird. I glanced over at him to see him still avoiding looking directly at me. Yeah, it was. Yeah, so, I'm sorry. I don't know why I said all those crazy things. He looked at me with a troubled expression on his face. It was natural to feel sympathy for him now that he was showing some sensitivity. You've been through a lot. That doesn't explain what I said yesterday, he told me in an agitated tone. I could clearly see how uncomfortable he was talking about it, and I didn't want to dwell on it either. Forget it. Anyway, I continued, trying to lighten the mood. I probably had on too much perfume. You weren't wearing any perfume, he said. You don't need it with your natural scent smelling so good. He stiffened and looked away from me again. I mean, the soap you use smells really good. Anyway, sorry again about the weirdness. He loped away down the hall without waiting for a reply from me. I turned back toward my locker as I thought that most of the weirdness wasn't Damien's fault. Who knew what kind of psychological damage he'd suffered from the trauma he'd endured during the attack that ended his girlfriend's life? I remembered that the animal had attacked him too so that must have been terrifying as well. And what about the weird things I had said to him and Blair that night? I also had no explanation for my strangely accurate predictions of danger. Nobody else seemed to know about that, and I wanted to keep it that way. Taylor hadn't questioned me very much about my early departure from the carnival, because she was too preoccupied with what had happened to Blair. The entire situation was bizarre in the extreme and I just wanted everything to go back to normal. And it almost did, except for Damien watching me. I couldn't see him in trigonometry, because I sat in the front row in that class. His seat was near the back, completely out of my line of sight, unless I turned around. I sat facing forward, but I was sure that I could feel his eyes on me. I'd never had this sensation before our odd conversation the day Damien returned to school, and I tried to convince myself that it was just my imagination. He'd apologized after all, and he hadn't done anything since. We hadn't even spoken at all anymore as he settled back into his familiar popularity. Some girls were already trying to spark his interest in the guise of being there for him after the loss of his girlfriend. You're shameless, a girl named Jennifer remarked to her friend in the restroom after she confessed that she made sure Damien got a good view of her cleavage the previous day. He definitely looked, the buxom brunette bragged. It was so worth it to get sent home to change, even though my mom gave me that whole speech about the image I present to the world. That top is so sexy without a bra. He was practically drooling. God, Lisa! It's only been two weeks since Blair's funeral, Jennifer protested. Waiting won't bring her back, Lisa replied pragmatically. Kristen will get him if I waste time. I'll be pissed if he takes her to prom. I thought you wanted to go with Corey, Jennifer said. Not if I can have Damien Stark, Lisa told her. I left the restroom wondering if I should already be thinking about prom. Senior year seemed to have snuck up on me, and I didn't feel ready for high school to end. As much as I griped about school and homework, my routine was comfortably familiar. I knew that things couldn't stay the same forever, but I was in no rush for my life to change. I was used to the way my life was here, and I wasn't too keen on everything being different in college. Unlike most of my friends, I'd never even had a real boyfriend. It was funny how I'd only had fleeting vacation romances. My first kiss happened during a family vacation to Florida when I was 14. We kept in touch over Facebook for a while, 
but he lived far away, and my thoughts were more preoccupied with the friends I could hang out with every day. Our bond wasn't strong enough to sustain a long-distance friendship, and we didn't bother trying for very long. I had also started high school after that summer and met Damien Stark. Suddenly, I began to fantasize about romance, although I hadn't given it much thought before, not even after experiencing my first kiss. Damien naturally wasn't interested in kissing me when he had the most popular girls in our grade flirting with him. My crush on him lasted all through freshman year, and then the summer break freed me of my obsession with him. My second kiss happened during a cruise to the Caribbean. Alex was from Florida, but I met him far from shore when we were out in deep ocean on what amounted to a floating city. The ship was huge and even had its own water park on board along with several pools. I met Alex while standing in line for the water slide, and we spent the remainder of our time at the water park together. Before parting, we made plans to meet at the teen dance club that night. Some couples were kissing on the dance floor, but Alex and I didn't kiss until two days later. We were stargazing out on the deck after spending practically the whole day together at the pool, at the rock climbing wall, and at the arcade. Alex told me that I was the coolest girl he'd ever met, and then he kissed me. That lovely, sweet kiss led to a more passionate one that was my first French kiss. I went back to my cabin that night, wondering how I could continue to see Alex after the cruise ended. His younger sister ruined my hopes for a more long-lasting romance with him when she saw us steal a kiss beside the pool the next day. While Alex went to get something to drink, she hurried to inform me that he had a girlfriend back home. Alex confirmed it when I asked him about it later. Yeah, but that's not a problem, is it? I know a girl as cool as you has to have a boyfriend back home. Yeah, I lied, still wanting him to think I was cool. I do. But we're not home, Alex said. Here, it's just us. Kissing him wasn't the same after that although I didn't let on that anything was wrong. I didn't miss him while I was on island excursions with my parents, and I was relieved when the cruise was over. Alex didn't suggest that we stay in touch through Facebook, and neither did I. I started my second year of high school feeling much more cynical about romance than when I'd been daydreaming about Damien the previous year. Seeing him with his girlfriend made me wonder if he'd cheated on her during summer vacation. They broke up about a month after school started, and he seemed to have a new girlfriend in the blink of an eye. My crush on him hadn't survived the summer, so I no longer cared about who he was dating. Not until he walked into my tent with Blair at the carnival two years later. And now, he was silently watching me. I noticed his gaze as we passed in the hallway, and it triggered a memory from 10th grade. He'd gone through a phase that year during which he'd restlessly moved from one girlfriend to the next. All the attention he received from girls had made him a conceited jerk, in my opinion. Finding out that I shared a class with him would have thrilled me the previous year. But now, it only made me realize how stupid my interest in him had been. We had to read our poems aloud in English class, and I already hated public speaking enough without having to contend with Damien's presence in the classroom. The residual nervousness I still felt due to my former crush on him intensified when I saw him smirking at me. My poem was safe and tame, certainly not like the ones I'd written about Damien last year. It was on the innocent topic of snowflakes, and I tried to ignore his gaze as I clutched my paper by my side. We were supposed to recite our poems mostly from memory, and only glance at the written words when necessary. My brain had trained my eyes to search out Damien whenever I was at school, and he was now an unwanted distraction to me. I got to the part about catching snowflakes on my tongue, and Damien acted it out by opening his mouth and sticking his tongue out while his eyes remained fixed on me. My cheeks flamed while I stumbled over my words. Mmm, he said. Feels good on my tongue. Other way around, baby a girl remarked in a sultry tone. Mr. Stark, Miss Collins, our teacher chided. Silence, please. Show respect for other students. She was talking to the wrong people. They had no respect for anyone, 
since they were both afflicted with a superiority complex. The sad part was that their fellow students fed their egos by bestowing popularity on them. Damien had to play to his audience, even if it meant defying the teacher. I can't help it if they melt on my tongue. He'd apparently become bored with his player role and settled down enough to date only one girl in 11th grade, and he'd still been with her at the start of senior year. Maybe they would have remained together until they graduated, if she hadn't been killed. Snowflakes. I spun around to look at Damien's retreating form. As I watched, he slowed and halted in the middle of the hallway. Then he turned around and walked back toward me. What? He demanded impatiently. I was still staring at him. Why do you say that? Say what? Damien asked. What you just said, I replied, not wanting to sound ridiculous by repeating it. I didn't say anything he told me. Why? What did you think I said? He seemed curious and keen to hear my answer. I had been certain that I'd heard him speak, but now I wasn't so sure. Uh, nothing. It had to be something for you to stop in your tracks, he insisted. Why do you stop? I questioned. He shrugged. You stopped, so I stopped. How do you know I stopped? I wondered. Your back was turned to me. I heard you, he said. Heard me, I repeated, as I looked around and noticed the annoyed expressions of the students who had to walk around us. What do you mean you heard me? I didn't call your name. I... He had a perplexed expression as he thought about it. You were walking, and then you weren't. His green eyes met my bewildered gaze. Never mind he said brusquely, and turned to hurry away to class. I stood there contemplating what had just happened until the bell rang and snapped me out of it. Being late to class should have worried me, but I was now more worried about the continuing weirdness involving me and Damien. It wasn't as intense as before, but it didn't seem to be going away either.